This video provides guidelines, recommended practices, and other information on bleach sampling and quenching. It represents a compilation of current experience and knowledge drawn from Chlorine Institute members and input from certifiers. The video is intended for training purposes only and is not intended to guarantee certification from any certifier. While this video covers bleach sampling, it's intended to be supplemental to your employee training programs. Further information can be obtained from the following resources. Topics to be covered by this training video include pulling the sample, handling the sample, quenching the sample, and logging and shipping. When pulling the sample, follow the guidelines outlined in NSF ANSI Standard 60, Annex B, Section B2 on sampling. A representative sample of the product should be obtained at a point prior to shipping. No sample should be taken from a broken or leaky container. Samples should be taken either from bulk, from packages, or from production, as specified in NSF ANSI Standard 60. If sampling from bulk, a specified quantity of sample should be obtained from a bulk storage tank or bulk shipping vessel through normal connections. Sampling from bulk shipping vessels is preferred if available on site as it's representative of the final container of product being shipped to the customer. Samples should be taken from the oldest production lot that's on site at the time. If sampling from packages, the specified quantity of sample should be collected from packaged inventory to fulfill the requirements of the NSF ANSI 60 standard. Samples should be taken from the oldest production lot that's on site at the time. If sampling from production, collect the specified quantity to fulfill the requirements of the NSF ANSI 60 standard. When submitting a sample, ensure you submit the specified quantity required by the certification body. Refer to the sample kit directions for the specific required quantities. In order to perform analysis of bleach for impurities such as chlorate, bromate, or perchlorate, the hypochlorite present in a bleach sample must be removed prior to analysis. The method to remove the hypochlorite is called quenching. There are two quenching methods used for certification, hydrogen peroxide or malonic acid. Both methods of analysis will be discussed in this video. Regardless of which method is used, it's extremely important that the samples are quenched as soon as possible after collection to prevent the formation of additional concentrations of chlorate and perchlorate. The addition of hydrogen peroxide to sodium hypochlorite is an exothermic reaction that could cause a violent evolution of gas and heat. For this reason, follow all appropriate safety precautions including, but not limited to, wearing the appropriate PPE based on your company's policies and procedures for eye and respiratory protection and a long sleeve shirt and gloves. Quenching should be done in a well-ventilated area or under a fume hood if desired. Refer to the certifier's shipping report or product sample form to determine the specific sample that requires collection. Unless otherwise directed by the shipping report, collect the highest strength product available. Supplies needed for the quenching procedure include reagent grade or purer 30% hydrogen peroxide, 1 liter to 2 liter glass or polyethylene beaker or pitcher for mixing, glass or polyethylene graduated cylinder for measuring 125 milliliters, an analytical balance, weighing dish, 5 mm glass or polyethylene disposable pipette, 125 milliliter leak-proof high-density polyethylene sample bottle, and a polyethylene leak-proof sample bag. Begin by measuring 125 milliliters of the specified sodium hypochlorite sample and transferring into the mixing beaker. Determine the free available chlorine in grams for the sample. If the actual cannot be determined, use the expected free available chlorine. Multiply the free available chlorine of the sample by 1.8 to obtain the mass in grams of 30% hydrogen peroxide to add to the sample.
set the sample to the side. Tear the weighing dish and using the pipette, weigh out the required grams of 30% hydrogen peroxide. Using the pipette, carefully begin adding the measured dose of hydrogen peroxide dropwise to the sodium hypochlorite sample. The sample will bubble and foam. Allow bubbling to subside after each addition before adding more. Continue to slowly add all of the pre-measured hydrogen peroxide. Carefully swirl the mixing beaker and allow the quenched sample to rest uncovered for about 30 minutes or until the temperature of the sample has stabilized. Label two sample bottles using the sample identifier provided. Label one of the sample bottles as a retain. Carefully transfer approximately half of the sample to the primary sample bottle and the other half to the retain bottle. Ensure a headspace of 25 to 50% in the sample bottle. Again, allow the samples to rest before capping. Place the bottles individually into separate leak-proof sealed bags and prepare the primary sample for shipment. The sample kit includes the following items. One NSF shipping report, also known as the product sample form. One label with the NSF product sample form number. A safety data sheet for malonic acid. Sampling instructions. One 250 milliliter high density polyethylene bottle. One 60 milliliter plastic vial containing a pre-measured amount of malonic acid. One disposable pipette. And one set of gloves. Because the reaction can be vigorous, gloves and eye protection are important to ensure safety. Wear appropriate PPE based on your company's policies and procedures. Pressure inside the vial can cause liquid to spray out when venting gases, presenting an eye hazard. It is very easy to add bleach too quickly, causing the reaction to foam over the sides, making a mess, and causing loss of the sample and or quenching agent. The bleach should be added slowly and carefully, never allowing the foam to reach the top of the vial. This reaction creates chlorine gas and care must be taken not to breathe the fumes produced during the quenching process, which is why quenching should be done in a well-ventilated area or under a fume hood if desired. Once an appropriate place has been selected to carry out the quenching, uncap the vial and slowly add the bleach dropwise. The amount added depends on the percent hypochlorite in the bleach, 10, 20, or 40 milliliters. The marks on the vial can be used to gauge this volume. If significant foaming occurs, pause until the bubbles subside before continuing. The more concentrated the bleach, the more bubbles will be generated. Once the entire sample has been added, cap and mix the vial thoroughly. More bubbles or gas may form during this step so use caution in opening the vial. Vent and open the vial, allowing it to rest before sealing for shipment. If bleach is added too quickly, this can easily result in overflow. Bleach should never be poured directly into the vial, as the reaction will be far too vigorous. Not only is the resulting spill corrosive, but the loss in volume makes it far more difficult to judge proper sample addition. Cap and invert several times after filling to dissolve the malonic acid. Wait 30 minutes to ensure that the reaction is completed. Add additional sample if needed to fulfill the desired sample volume based on hypochlorite strength. Once you've placed the cap on the vial, secure the cap with tape.
The following are generic reporting and shipment guidelines for both quenching methods. Please ensure that you log what is required by each individual certifier as the requirements may vary. On the report log provided by the certifier, record the requested information regarding the selected sample. Some examples of required information include the product trade name, the lot number or production identifier, hypochlorite strength, date and time sampled, date of manufacture or repackage, and other information. Return the samples promptly to the certifier. The sample containers should be secured or cushioned within the outer pack to prevent shifting and damage during normal conditions of transport. Include the completed report log provided by the certifier, safety data sheets as specified, the certifier's label, tag, or barcode for sample identification as instructed, and send to the ship to address provided. Be sure to include all required package marking in accordance with USDOT regulations. The information contained in this video is drawn from sources believed to be reliable. The Institute and its members, jointly and severally, make no guarantee and assume no liability in connection with any of this information. Moreover, it should not be assumed that every acceptable procedure is included or that special circumstances may not warrant modified or additional procedures. The user should be aware that changing technology or regulations might require a change in the recommendations herein. Appropriate steps should be taken to ensure that the information is current when used. These suggestions should not be confused with federal, state, provincial, municipal, or insurance requirements, or with national fire, building, or safety codes. The Chlorine Institute exists to support the chloralkali industry in advancing safe, secure, environmentally compatible, and sustainable production, distribution, and use of its mission chemicals. CI's mission chemicals include chlorine, sodium and potassium hydroxides, sodium hypochlorite, the distribution of vinyl chloride monomer, VCM, and the distribution and use of hydrogen chloride. This support extends to giving continued attention to the security of chlorine handling operations. Chlorine Institute members are committed to adopting CI's safety and stewardship initiatives, including pamphlets, checklists, and incident sharing that will assist members in achieving measurable improvement. For more information on the Institute's stewardship program, visit CI's website. We would like to thank NSF International, UL, and the Water Quality Association for their part in helping make this video possible.